Today we're going to talk about the basics of punctuation. This should be a fairly quick tutorial, just going over the basic usage of the punctuation marks in the English language. It's not exhaustive by any means, but should give you a cursory knowledge of the things that you're going to need to be successful in negotiating and navigating uh, the modern English language. The first punctuation mark that we're going to talk about is the period, uh, which is clearly seen here. Okay, The period, period shows up at the end of the sentence and after most abbreviations. So an example of that would be, I ate a sandwich, period. Um, Mr. Period Jernigan would be an example of that as well. The next one we'll talk about is the question mark. The question mark shows up after a direct question, but not after an indirect one. So a good example of that would be, did you really say that? You can hear the inflection in my voice going up towards the end that helps show that that's clearly a direct question. A non-example where we wouldn't use a question mark, where some may think we would, would be the following example. Bill asked if we could eat now. Well, the subject of this sentence is Bill, and the verb is asked. It's not a direct question. Going onward, let's talk now about the exclamation point. The exclamation point is used after an expression that shows strong emotion. We typically don't employ this a lot in our academic writing. For example, we might say something like, this is the best day ever. And we would punctuate that with our exclamation point to show enthusiasm. Next, the semicolon, which is used to separate two independent clauses. And it's also used to separate items in lists that contain lists already. It acts like a comma in those instances. But its most common usage will be between two independent clauses. So, for example, football is my favorite sport, semicolon. I like the Miami Dolphins best, period. The next thing we'll talk about is a colon. The colon is, a com is something that comes af or after a complete sentence. Um, and then after the colon, anything can follow it. Um, it could be a name, it could be a list, it can be a quotation or an explanation. It kind of helps draw focus to whatever follows it, but you do need to precede your colons with an independent clause. An example of this would be, I like to eat the following foods, colon, that's an independent clause, and then we could follow it with a list, spaghetti, hamburgers, and pizza. Next, we'll talk about the dash. The dash is used to isolate inserted information and helps us signal an abrupt change of thought or to emphasize what follows. It's kind of like a supercolon in its emphasis format. So in order to get this on your keyboard, you'll go ahead and hit, hit two hyphens, type in, and then type in the next word, and you'll get a, hyph or a, a dash out of it. The example we have here is he knew he only had one choice attack right so this draws kind of helps build suspense and then points up to that pivotal moment moment an author will use this artistically often to help lead the reader to a point of emphasis the next punctuation mark we'd like to talk about today is that of the quotation mark quotation marks show up around direct quotations as well as titles of shorter works many shorter works are things that include short stories poems songs essays and tv program episodes so for example he loved to sing stay with me by sam smith that's the title of a song so we would put that in our quotation marks next example would be a direct quote I love to go jogging in the local park, Bill said. Okay, we've got a direct quote from Bill. Important thing to note about quotation marks, especially when we're talking about a quotation, is that we're going to use it uh, and we're going to place the punctuation inside of it, typically. There are a couple of exempt examples of that, uh, but we'll cover those very in depth when we actually get to those and encounter those. For the most part, you're safe to bet if you put your you're safe if you put your act or you put your um, punctuation within your quotation marks <clears throat> let's scroll on down and look next at italics okay italics are used to indicate the work of a longer title uh, uh, the title of a longer work okay longer works include things like books newspapers magazines plays albums movies or the title of a tv series an interesting side note also the names of warships are off are uh, italicized it's kind of an interesting thing that i didn't know about until a couple of years ago so an example of that would be i love crime and punishment but i hated war and peace 
as the reader reads this, they'll be able to tell that we're talking about the title of something because they see it italicized. Let's next move on to capitalization. Uh, there are seven basic capitalization rules that we're going to hit today. Now, this isn't exhaustive by any means, but it covers most of the instances that we need. So the first word of every sentence is going to be capitalized, and we hopefully are pretty familiar with this. We would also capitalize the first word of a direct quote. In titles, we capitalize the first, last, and every word except articles and prepositions. Now, articles are words like a and an, and the, and prepositions are words like of, uh, on, around, those type of words. We also capitalize specific titles or names of people, places, language, races, and nationalities. We also capitalize names of months, days of the weeks, and special days, like holidays. We also capitalize the titles of a relationship if it takes place of the person's name. Okay. For example, the possessive makes it lowercase. If I were to say my mom, then it's lowercase. But if I said mom did that, then I would go ahead and capitalize it because mom takes the place of that name of that person. If it's the name of a particular person or thing, that also would be capitalized. That concludes our test, or our, our, our tutorial on the basics of punctuation. Okay. Uh, hopefully you're ready now to take the quiz. Best of luck.